popular Israeli song that's often played on Yom Hazikaron in honor of the soldiers and underground fighters who died helping to create the State of Israel and those who've been killed since 1948, plus victims of terror. The solemn date begins tonight, Tuesday, and it comes a week after Yom HaShoah, when the six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust were remembered. But a retired Israeli general says it's high time Israelis learn not to be so insular with their history and start to honor also the 1.5 million Jewish allied soldiers who stopped the Holocaust by fighting in the Second World War, including 17,000 Canadians. So he has a new museum about to open to do just that. It's called the Chaim Herzog Museum of the Jewish Soldier in the Second World War. It's located in Latrun between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And the founder says he hopes after people visit Yad Vashem, Latrun will be their next stop. You got more and more uh, Jewish people who did much more than the average in order to really beat the Nazi enemy. And we didn't talk about it. And we didn't understand that this is part of our heritage, you know, fighters, not only victims. I'm Ellen Basner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Tuesday, May the 3rd, 2022. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. The new museum's been in the works for 20 years since the late Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon gave it the green light back in 2002. The museum was supposed to open in 2015, seven years ago, but it's been delayed by political squabbling and funding troubles. Nevertheless, it is on track now to open in July. And while the late Canadian philanthropist David Azrieli's name is on the front as a major private backer, it's actually the British, Soviets, Americans, and the South African Jewish military stories which are getting major attention and their own separate wings, while the Canadian contribution will be highlighting six men, Montrealer Sidney Shulamson, an ace fighter pilot, Torontonians Ben Dunkelman and Gordon Steinberg. Dunkelman fought in the Israeli War of Independence as well, while Steinberg flew 92 missions before being shot down in the Mediterranean. Ottawa's Leo Heaps, who helped dozens of airmen escape Nazi capture, and Albert Hansen of Calgary, an engineer who built roads for the Allies. The sixth hero they picked, William Weiser, was not Canadian. He was an American who served with the RCAF. Coming up, we'll chat with the museum's founder, Tzvi Kantor. But first, here's what's making news elsewhere in Canada right now. I'm Phil Kretzmar in Ottawa, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. Toronto police say they didn't make any arrests at this past weekend's Al-Quds Day rally, as nobody violated the laws for hate speech or other criminal acts. It appears this year's rally was better behaved after stern warnings from the police chief on Friday that the force would be monitoring the anti-Israel crowd with cameras and sending in extra officers who are experts in hate crimes. But Jewish groups say just because nobody was charged doesn't mean it was fine. There were still upsetting slogans and anti-Semitic language used and calls for the destruction of Israel. B'nai B'rith wants the Canada Revenue Agency to investigate some of the mosques who bust people in, while Sija says it's reviewing video because the rally still called for an intifada and supported the leader of Hezbollah, which is a banned terrorist group in Canada. And now, stay tuned for this important message. From award-winning journalist Marsha Lederman comes Kiss the Red Stairs, a compelling memoir of Holocaust survival, intergenerational trauma, divorce, and discovery that will guide readers through several lifetimes of monumental change. Marsha was five when a simple question led to a horrifying answer. She asked her mother why she didn't have any grandparents. Her mother told her the truth, the Holocaust. Decades later, her parents dead and herself a mother to a young son, Marsha begins to wonder how much history has shaped her own life. Reeling in the wake of a divorce, she craves her parents' help. But in their absence, she is gripped by a need to understand the trauma they suffered, and she begins her own journey into the past to tell her family stories of loss and resilience. Kiss the Red Stairs, available now wherever books are sold. And retired Brigadier General Tzvi Kantor joins us now from Lechroon. Welcome to the CJN Daily. Welcome. When was the first uh, idea to get this museum started? Well, the idea came from one of our members, a retired veteran who served in the Red Army, 
And his uh, idea is to make something like an exhibition here in uh, Yad Vashrion in Matron. And nothing moved. Somebody told him about me. Honestly, I knew nothing about it. And then within the time when I realized that I know nothing, I start learning the, the subject. And I understood that uh, our way of education, our way of behaving to those people is a little bit uh, wrong. And we have to do something to change the, the idea. Because in Israel, nobody cares about uh, what the, the Jewish have done during the Second World War. Here in Israel, we are talking about the Holocaust, and that's it. Uh, why did you say you didn't know anything about it growing up in Israel as a soldier yourself? Why was there some stigma about remembering the Second World War? Because it is much uh, convenient to be miserable. It is much convenient to collect uh, or to, to, to get uh, emotion and uh, pity or and not uh, as, a, as a somebody who did something, because did something all the world did. But the Holocaust is ours, and we want to be unique. So we talk about the Holocaust. On the other hand, when you are talking about uh, the Second World War, it is for us somewhere behind the, the sea. It is not our problem. The only problem is that they are killing Jews. We have to fight against the British here in Israel and to make our country free from the, from the British. For us, well, we grew up that the British is, is the enemy. And then the, the fact that more volunteers went and joined the British army, nobody talked about it here in Israel. And yes, we mentioned the, the Jewish Brigade in a few words. We're talking about Hannah Senesh. But if you check the, the real facts, you will find that more than 35,000 Jewish people from Eretz Israel, from Palestine, joined the, joined the war and fought. And uh, in Israel, we insist that uh, the only thing that you have to talk is about the Palmach and the Haganah, later on the Etzel and the Lehi, and that's it. And uh, to talk about the Jewish people who fought in the Canadian Air Force, what is the connection between them and us? So we have to change a lot in the attitude of, of ourselves to ourselves, and to teach ourselves what really happened. And when we are talking about the motivation, you will find that the Jewish people gather joined the armies in higher percent than the number in, in the, among the population. Why? Because they have family over there. They, they left the, the roots over there, the sources, their families, and they want to help them. The Canadian army, for example, was volunteer army. And see how many people joined. The South African army is a volunteer army. See how many Jewish people joined the army. And I hope that our museum will tell a little bit about it and, and, and open the, the understanding, the willing to, to do and to learn much more about it. So who is the museum actually for? Is it for Israelis? Uh, or, you know, is it for a sort of diaspora families of veterans to come on vacation and take a look? It is for everyone. It is for the Israelis. It is for the Jewish people all over the world. It is for uh, tourists. It is the whole world to see what the Jewish people did. Not only, in another world, Go to Yad Vashem, see what happened to us, but on your way back to the, to the coast, go through Latun, see what the Jewish people did. Not only suffered, not only victims, but also fighters. Can you talk about uh, one or two of the Canadian uh, 
people that are definitely going to be part of your story. Very brave uh, soldiers. Some of them later on uh, uh, became Machal, which means the volunteers who came to help us. And if you mention uh, Latrun, uh, one of the, the poorest part of the independence war was the Battle of, uh, of Latrun in 1948, done by uh, the 7th Brigade. After those battles in Latrun, the command was changed and a, and a Jewish Canadian, Ben Donkelman, took the command. And honestly, what he has done, it is unbelievable. Uh, the 7th Brigade actually uh, conquered the whole Galilee. And we know nothing about those guys. You know, the, there's only one other thing I want to ask you. And it's it, something I found when I was researching, and I started 10 years ago for my work, there were still veterans around. Now, there's hardly any. And I wonder how that sits on you, that a museum for people who there's hardly any of them that will be able to see it. How do you feel about that? Those veterans 20 years ago dreamed that they will be in the opening of this uh, museum. And unfortunately, most of them passed away, just waiting for the opening ceremony. Yesterday, uh, he's uh, over uh, 100 years old. He fought among the Jewish brigade, and his dream is to come here and to see this museum running and opening. I don't know. I don't know. And uh, this is not a private problem of some uh, crazy people. Let's hope that it will uh, that we will finish it on time. And on the 1st of uh, September, 20 years after, we will launch it. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Steve Argentaro of Toronto. He works for TSN, and he wrote to say he loved our story about Guy Lafleur posing for a Jewish kid's photography assignment. And we'll end the episode with this clip of Canada's Minister of Diversity and Inclusion and Youth, Ahmad Hussein, who's sending greetings for Jewish Heritage Month. Hello, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. May marks Canadian Jewish Heritage Month. It is a time to celebrate Jewish culture, faith, and history in Canada. Nous rendons également hommage au courage, à la détermination et à la résilience dont les membres des communautés juives ont fait preuve tout au long de l'histoire. From medicine to theater, engineering to music, architecture to academia, politics, law and the arts and more, Jewish Canadians have made and continue to make invaluable contributions to our country. We continue to stand together against anti-Semitism and discrimination whether it occurs online, at work, or in our communities. Throughout the month of May and beyond, I invite all Canadians to reflect on and learn more about the many ways Jewish Canadians have played and continue to play an important role in communities across the country. This episode has been brought to you by Looking Back, Moving Forward, 160 Years of Jewish Life in B.C., Published by the Jewish Museum and Archives of British Columbia for their 50th anniversary, this elegant volume is a once-in-a-generation collection of Jewish life and history throughout the province. Order your copy today at jewishmuseum.ca.